We're going to take you through some exiting and anchoring techniques for the deployment of your escape system. The first step, once you identify the window that you're going to exit from, is to completely clear it out. In essence, to make that window into a door. Your goal is twofold. First of all, you want to remove any panic hardware that could slow down or inhibit your escape. Second, by taking out the top portion of the window, we can allow some of the room or some of the heat in the room to dissipate, or at least to convect out over the top of your head, buying you some time. The big disadvantage that we all know is that once you breach an exterior wall, we've just created convection currents that are going to draw that fire to your location, especially if you're unable to seal off that door to that room. So regardless of what technique you use, you want to perform this tactic as quickly as possible with the least amount of steps. Now in a residential setting, firefighters will encounter typically two types of windows, either a casement or a double hung. Now if the casement's wide enough, a lot of times you can get by with just taking out the glass. But double hungs, on the other hand, can be a little bit more involved because you have two separate window sections and additional framing material. A lot of times when firefighters go to take out a double hung, they'll break out the top paint first, then the bottom pane, and then they'll go to addressing the framing material. This is actually a few more steps than is really necessary. If you're confronted with a standard or traditional double hung with lightweight glass panes, you can actually bypass each individual window section and go to directly attacking the window framing. In this case, we want to break that middle sash in half with a downward blow. Now, depending on the construction of the window, this may take a few strikes, but if you make that initial strike properly, a lot of times you can break out the top pane and the bottom pane simultaneously. And if you encounter a storm window, as this window has, a lot of times you can take that out simultaneously as well. Once you've broken that middle sash and taken out these sections, you can go to addressing the side walls of the window to push out the remaining framing material. You do a quick perimeter sweep of the window itself to remove any glass or sharp objects that pose a hazard to you or your rope. Uh, paying special or close attention to the sill plate, and then you can follow through with the deployment of your system. Now that you've cleared out the window, we're going to take you through some anchoring techniques and some options. The location and the type of anchor you select will dictate the speed, efficiency, and safety of your escape. It's going to be dictated by a few factors. First of all, whether you're carrying a tool. Second, how your system is rigged, and if you have any alternate anchoring options that are pre-rigged into your system. One technique that works well when you're carrying a tool, either a pickhead, flathead, axe, or a halligan type bar, is the tool in the wall anchoring technique. Pull out the lead end of your system, and ideally, in your system, you would have a quick loop pre rigged or basically a figure eight knot. You insert the handle of your axe or the fork end of the halligan bar through that quick loop. When breaching the sheathing of a window, whether it's lath and plaster or drywall, you're going to go about 12 to 18 inches above the bottom sill and about 6 inches to the side wall away from the frame. This will help you bypass any studs that are in the wall. Axe blade away from the window opening. Come in with an initial breach. You're going to take the tool in and push it up parallel to the wall, which fractures the sheeting above the breach, which allows you to push the tool down. It gets the tool parallel to the wall, which allows an easier insertion. Ideally, you want to bury this axe as deep as you can. Right now, I basically hit a fire stop. There's still about half of that tool inside the wall, which is plenty strong enough to hold my weight. And that's kind of your indicator. On an axe or a halogen bar, you want at least half the handle, if not about three quarters, and that will sufficiently hold your body weight. Because what's happening here is when I initially come out, the tool is pulled laterally 
and then pull into the wall. That's where my strength is. I'll come in, give me enough to clear the windowsill, hook in, and I'm ready to bail. Here's how it looks with a Halligan bar. Fork in through the loop, bevel side up, adds end down. Initial breach, push up parallel, slide the tool down. Before you take the window out, if you can, close the door to the room. Your first blow should be downward to break the middle sash, which should take out the top and bottom panes simultaneously. Then you can work on clearing the rest of the frame. When inserting the tool, make your breach 6 inches to the side of the window and 12 to 18 inches above the sill. When working with an axe, make sure to face the blade away from the window opening. If you're not dealing with a lot of heat, it's acceptable to straddle the window sill as you exit. Otherwise, the preferred method is to roll out head first so you can stay below any heat venting from the window. Another option when you have stacked or side-by-side -side windows, whether they're casements or double hungs, is once you clear out both window sets, you can wrap the center frame. Alright, well, another option, if you have a last ditch anchoring device like the Crosby hook, you can't use a tool in the wall anchoring technique because of the sheathing of the wall, or just the construction of the wall won't allow it, or you don't have tools available, maybe you lost them or you never brought them in, the Crosby hook is going to be your last option for getting out. You're going to place the Crosby in the corner of the window. Depending on how your system is rigged up, typically that's the left corner. This does not have a projected sill plate, but as long as you get it in the corner, I'm going to lay it on as, as deep into the corner as I can, hold it in with a gloved hand. If you can punch into the drywall a little bit, take advantage of that. You can use a leg to lock yourself in and control yourself before you exit, otherwise take yourself all the way through. And once you got the system loaded and tensioned, then you can let go of the Crosby. See ya. All right, keep in mind that we're not always gonna have that low windowsill height to be able to affect an easy dismount or exit. In some cases, you might have windowsills that exceed four feet high. And the threshold for probably a, a safe and efficient bale is about 36 to 42 max. If it gets higher than that, you're gonna need to step up on something. If you don't have any pieces of furniture immediately available, you can actually climb the wall, whether it's lath and plaster or drywall, just with the boost. The biggest thing is to try to indicate or locate where the studs are. Remember, if you have switch plates or outlets, they can give you an indicator on where a stud's located. And you can go immediately adjacent to that, and then keep that 16 inch on center mark. And that will help you facilitate making your breach with your boot and climbing the wall. Go ahead, Tony. Grabs onto the sill initial breach, climbs up, gets him to sill height, and he can go ahead and affect his bail or exit. 